Hello guys, I hope you're all doing well. Thank you so much for being here. So today we're going to talk about inner child healing and love and relationships and how all of that is connected and how I personally believe that we will not find stable, healthy love and relationships if we don't heal our inner child first. Okay, sounds controversial and I think it pretty much is in the spiritual community, but I'm here to share my truth. <laughs> so let's get into it. Okay, so I think, or I don't really think, I know because I guess it's kind of proven at this point, right? Our inner child is basically leading the way we act and we feel and you know, we, how we say things, how we connect with other people, how we are um, acting in our relationships, whether it's platonic or romantic or whatever. Your inner child is basically pulling the strings. I think that's how you say it. Don't know. But you know what I mean, right? Like they are basically leading the way you act subconsciously, right? And they play a huge part the inner children, this is what we're talking about, play a huge part about how we act and how we um, treat other people, how we want other people to treat ourselves and all of that. Now listen, I spent a great deal of my teenage years, I sound like I'm old grandma, <laughs> um, but you know what I mean, I spent the last couple of years until last year, I guess, or until, I guess, like six months ago, okay, I spent a great deal of my time and energy chasing people who were not worth it, who are absolute cr trash cans, okay, I'm not gonna lie, I, it's, it was the way it was, right, I was chasing people and, um, you know, keep, a, I kept attracting people who were fucking garbage. And with that, I mean, just so emotionally and mentally crazy and unavailable and cold. And, you know, I basically, I was a magnet for fuckboys, okay? Like, I'm not even exaggerating. Um, and I feel like I still am a little bit, but now I know to walk away when one comes around, <laughs> you know? So, um, yeah, so I spent a lot of energy, I wasted a lot of energy, okay? On people who were not good for me, right? And I guess last year, this healing journey, um, you know, in regards to inner child healing and how your inner child affects the way you act in relationships and all of that, it all started slowly building up. It started kicking in, you know? And when I was traveling alone this spring, it really fucking hit me. Like, you know, that's when I had this like huge aha moment and I was like, oh my gosh, this is why I act the way I act. And this inner child wound is still present and it needs to be healed. Otherwise, I will never be able to have a stable, healthy, romantic connection. Right? So I started doing the inner work. I started, um, I started observing myself and the way I act, right? And, you know, while I was on my trip, I guess the universe presented one last kind of like toxic situation where I really needed to prove to myself, okay, this is why I act the way I act. This is why um, I'm feeling so attached and anxious for no reason, right? So basically what happened was I um, was in Edinburgh, Scotland, beautiful city. <laughs> and I was, you know, going on dating apps because I was bored. So I met this guy on Bumble and we um, met up and it was really beautiful. Like, I feel like he 
he offered lots of like you know love spiritual advice and all of that and i definitely felt this connection um and once he left i knew that i was never going to see him again right like it was just obvious <laughs> because uh, he was i don't even know where exactly he came from but it was fucking far away okay and obviously i you know, I do live in another country, like, I am also not from Scotland and all of that, so I was like, okay, whatever, you know? So I went on with my solo journey, I traveled to other parts of Scotland, it was beautiful, but in the back of my mind, or I shouldn't say in the back of my mind, because it was pretty present in my mind, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sad, I will never see this dude again, like, he was so, he was so fun to be around, right? And I started feeling very sad and drained emotionally, right? But it wasn't like a crazy, deep, like genuine, like, oh my gosh, this is my soulmate and I'm so sad kind of sadness. No, it was the inner wound my inner child still had, right? That needed healing, that needed advice that needed to be told you don't need someone to be happy right because deep down i still believed that um i kind of connected this dude who i only met one time for a couple of hours by the way i connected him with the idea of love and the idea that if he stays in my life, everything's gonna be fine, right? If I see this dude again, everything's gonna be fine and I will basically be saved, right? I connected him to that. I got attached to the idea of this stranger because I didn't fucking know him, you know? Like, we talked for a couple of hours, that's it. Like, you don't know someone after talking. Even after sharing deep talk after a couple of hours, you don't know them, right? Annoying. But, um, yeah, I kind of got attached to the idea of him, um, which is so silly, and it only lasted for, like, a week or something, um, and it, I guess it was also because I was feeling kind of, kind of lonely, because it was my first time solo traveling and all of that, um, but I really realized, oh, fuck, like, I need to heal this wound, so that's what I did. I started analyzing myself, I started observing my behaviors, I started realizing, oh my gosh, this connection, this is not a soulmate twin flame connection because bitch, I was obsessed with twin flames and soulmate and karmic relationships, that kind of shit. A couple of years ago when I first started my spiritual journey, I was obsessed with the idea of meeting my twin flame or soulmate and all of that, which I honestly think is just honestly, I think it is just a way for people to allow themselves to stay in toxic relationships, right? Especially, especially the twin flame thing, but let's not get into that, right? So I started doing the work. I was like, you know what? Um, I know this is not true love. This is just attachment, right? And I've had that happen in the past where I was so attached to someone and I confused that attachment as real love but that is not true love true love is loving someone unconditionally true love is feeling safe around somebody true love is not losing your fucking shit if the person doesn't text you for a couple of days true love is not attachment I said what I said, and obviously there are some exceptions. Sometimes, um, sometimes people actually do fall in love and they still have their anxious attachment style, which we'll get to in a second, uh, the attachment styles. People will fall in love with someone and the anx anxious attachment style is still in the way, right? I'm not saying that it's always like that, like if you're attached to someone that doesn't automatically mean that it's not true love, because sometimes it is, right? But what I'm saying is, if you want a true loving, independent, independent, 
unconditional relationship, <laughs> you guys need to do the inner work, okay? You need to start the inner work now, especially if you're in some kind of connection where you're like, oh my gosh, like, I'm so attached to this person. Or you confuse this attachment with love, as I said, and you think things like, oh my gosh, I keep thinking about this person, I'm stressing about whether they're gonna text me back or not. Um, they didn't, you know, they didn't show me as much affection and love as I would have liked uh, the last time I met them. Oh, this is real love. No, bitch, it isn't. It's attachment. You are attached. This is not real love. Unconditional love is letting the person you love be letting them be love freely okay because we must remember that love is free it doesn't come with the price it doesn't come with things like uh you know attachment right i mean as i said sometimes it does but at the core of love it is pure love love it's meant to be experienced in a beautiful way i don't think that love hurts at the core of its like energy right and obviously sometimes love hurts don't get me wrong especially when you're going through a break breakup or you are um moving away from your first high school crush or whatever love fucking hurts a lot of the times but at the core of love there's only love and nothing else right i hope i'm making sense you know because i don't really know much about life yet as i said um in my other videos, it's like, I'm only 20, you know, this is just what I've learned from observing my relationships and how I dealt with uh, love and relationships in the past, right? And it took a lot of inner healing to get here. So I do want to talk about the things you can do in order to actually experience true love, right? In order to actually attract that healthy, stable, unconditional, independent, and I keep saying independent love because it's important, okay? Independence in relationships is so important um, because if I were to get in a relationship right now because I'm single, and honestly, like, I'm not even chasing it. I don't really care. I love being single, you know? Um, it's another perk of healing, I guess. It's like, I've just been enjoying my single time so much. Okay, if you really want that independent, unconditional love, if you really want to attract that, if you want to attract the right person, the first thing you need to do is realize what your attachment style is. Okay, now there is the secure attachment style, the avoidant attachment style, and the anxious attachment style. And the anxious attachment style is, I guess, the most famous one. In the spiritual community because i feel like in the spiritual community and in the community you know who who watch these type of videos um there are a lot of empaths right and i feel like personally i think don't come for me this is just my opinion but i feel like empaths tend to uh more towards the anxious attachment style okay so i'm not getting into every attachment style now i might do a video on that but I do run to, like, uh, you know, um, gather more information and read more about it because I don't want to, like, share any misinformation or something like that. Or I don't want to act like I know it all because I fucking don't, you know? Um, but the anxious attachment style, as I said, is like a person being very attached to their partner and it's like they cannot live without them, right? Everything is about their partner, right? You cannot live without your partner if you are anxiously attached to them. You, you know, when they're at work and they haven't texted you all day, you start to worry and question everything. If you're good enough, if, if they're cheating on you while they're at work, if they will ever return, you know, what if they got into an accident um, on their way home? That is why they're like, 10 minutes late than, later than usual, right? Shit like that, that is anxious attachment style, okay? Or if you think that this person is the one and if 
this relationship doesn't work out, you will be miserable for the rest of your life because there are not better people. That is anxious attachment style. Been there, done that, okay? It's exhausting. It is fucking exhausting, you guys. Like, I wasted so much energy. I wasted so much energy being anxiously attached to other people. So that is why you guys need to heal it, okay? Don't make the same fucking mistake like I did, okay? Don't waste your energies chasing people. Don't waste your energy worrying if someone leaves. Okay, so your the, the love of your life, aka the person you're just attached to, leaves your life. So what? You're gonna, like, you're gonna live, right? No one dies from love, all right? No one, I think. For the majority, no one fucking dies from love, okay? And I promise, I went through so many heartbreaks, okay? Um, because I attached myself to people who weren't worthy, right? Of my energy. I went through so many heartbreaks in my life, in the past, um, and I noticed every time I got back up stronger, Every time I had even more confidence than the last time. Every single fucking time I got back up on my feet and I started living again. I started being so fucking happy again. And it's like nothing ever happened. So if you're currently dealing with some kind of heartbreak, just know that it will be over. It, at some point, it will be fucking over, right? It will not stay there forever. It just will, it will not happen. Like, life is fluid, you know, energy is, it's all temporary, you know, the river of life. You cannot be happy all the time, you cannot be sad all the time, it all goes on, right? Just know that. So yeah, as I said, figure out which kind of attachment style you have. Um, you know, props to you if you have the secure one. I don't think you would be watching this video right now. <laughs> Um, but our main goal is, right, if you watch this and you have problems with this certain area, uh, you know, in regards to healing and all of that, your goal should be to get that secure attachment style, because that will change your fucking relationship forever, okay? Um, so I do want to talk a little bit about um, you know, how you can heal the anxious attachment style, because that is important, as I said in the beginning of the video, do inner child work, okay? Everything, every toxic pattern you have, you're dealing with right now, it comes from your childhood, okay? Or maybe not everything, because sometimes later on in life, shit happens as well that really traumatizes you and um, you know, ruins you and yourself, right? But listen, when it comes to relationships, I really do feel like that the majority of your behavior and patterns come from a childhood, right? So what you need to do in order to heal is start caring for that inner child. Start affirming to yourself that you will, you will live, you will be happy even if this person leaves you, okay? You need to start believing that you will be happy and fulfilled. You can fulfill yourself. You are already whole, okay? You are not half of a soul looking for the other soul, right? That is such a fucking lie. You are a whole soul by yourself and you do not need a relationship to be happy in life. You just don't fucking need it. like. You know, there are people who stay single all their lives, you know, and they have the best freaking life ever and it's beautiful. So don't fucking stress it. Allow yourself, right? It's like two things, right? Um, it is actually accepting it, accepting the truth that you are worthy and fulfilled and you can live the best life of your dreams all by yourself. But if you have problems stepping into that energy, I would say be open to the idea of that first. Be open to the idea that life is actually magical and beautiful without the love of your life, right? 
or without the person you have become attached to. Life can be beautiful without this person because you are so full of love already. You are already whole, you know, so you don't really need someone. Obviously, having a partner in life is beautiful and it definitely can add to your life. Um, but for me, it started shifting from a desire, you know, from a constant desire to a preference. It started becoming more of a preference and, you know, just a wish. Like, I wish to be in a beautiful relationship at some point, but I don't need it to feel happy because I know I'm very, very well capable of being happy all by myself because I know what I love doing. I know how to spend my, uh, what I, what, what, bitch, English, 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 hello. <laughs> I know what I love doing in my free time. I know what I love to eat. I know which places I like to go to. I know that I love going on walks all by myself. So I'm doing it every day. I know that I love watching Yoma Girls. So I'm doing it every evening. I know that I love doing yoga. So I do yoga every day. I know that I love singing, so I sing every day. I know that I love rapping, so I rap every day. I know that I love writing, so I try to write every day. You know, things like that, I'm like, wow, bitch, like you're so full of magic. You're so full of things that bring you joy and you don't need anyone for that. You can create that joy for yourself. So, Really dive deep and ask yourself, like, what do you love to do in your free time, right? What's, or what would you do if no one was looking, if no one was judging, if no one was here to judge you? What would you be doing? Which hobbies would you have and pursue, right? Start like that. Start building a beautiful relationship with yourself, okay? Because I feel like that is the most valuable relationship you will ever have in your entire life. And if that relationship isn't fixed, then what's the point, you know? You need to be your best friend. You need to be, you need to be the fucking love of your life, right? And it's like, it goes in all areas of your life, okay? Like, you can go on personal dates with yourself, okay? You don't need a lover to have a picnic and watch the sunset. You can do it yourself. You can go to the cinema alone. Um, you can, whatever. You know, you can even have fucking sex with yourself. It's fun, you know? Like, you don't really need other people to do that. And if you're really horny, just have a hookup. Like, who fucking cares? You know, but that is kind of like besides the point. I guess it kind of ties in, but you know what I mean? Like, you can live your life. You can live it. You have all the potential and gifts magic. You need to be happy by yourself. I said what I said. So, I think that was the video. I don't have anything else to say, but do that in a child healing work, right? Um, by the way, a thing I have been wanting to do, but kind of like haven't gotten around to do it. So I think I'm going to do that today just to hold myself accountable. Look up in a child healing journaling prompts on Pinterest or TikTok or whatever your preferred social media is. Look up journaling prompts for inner child healing and journal about it, okay? I haven't really like done any kind of like specific journal prompts ever, I think, maybe a couple of times because I'm more so like a free freestyle Journal, journal person like I love journaling but I do it like you know my way I don't really use prompts but that is something I've been wanting to do so start journaling but like that is the most important thing start tracking your thoughts and what comes out especially if something comes up from your childhood or if you um, observe the way you you know you react to on towards something journal about it, okay? 
Journaling is like a free therapy session and you should take advantage of it, okay? So journaling, journaling, journaling is my number one advice. And then also, yo, last one, I did one of these a couple of days ago and it was the most, it was so fucking magical and healing, right? Inner child meditations. Look them, up, look them up on YouTube. I might even link some down in the description here. They are so powerful, okay? Meditation and journaling equals free therapy sessions, okay? And if you can afford a therapist, honey, do it. Do it. You will not regret it, okay? Find yourself a good therapist or holistic healer or whatever, you know? Do the work. It's time to do the work. If you really want love, if you really, really deeply want a stable relationship, you guys need to do the inner work because otherwise it's not going to happen. You will continue staying attached to people who really don't deserve you for the rest of your life. Do you want that? No, you don't. We don't want that. So it's time to do the fucking work, okay? So that was the video. I love you and I hope you have a beautiful day and... Bye.